so what happened last time? Did we just insult Donald Trump a lot again? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so we got some lovely comments on those videos, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like, um, uh, fuck your president is shit. <laughs> I still think the best bit is uh, the best video on for this on the Fact Fiend channel is where uh, we were talking about Thor. Oh, sorry, Hulk. And we oh. recorded it when Thor Ragnarok came out. But Thor Ragnarok came out like a, about a month earlier in the UK because they filmed part of it here. Oh. And the intro to the video is us just saying, oh, yeah. We get to watch Thor Ragnarok early, so you don't get Marvel movies and you've got a shit president. As a joke. Mm. And every other comment is, you fucking dumb British, you don't know anything about America. <laughs> Stop talking shit about America's president, your president, your prime minister's shit. It's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, and we embrace it. Yeah, any British person will tell you the prime minister's an op-ed. There's fucking fuck Boris Johnson just graffitied across the entire UK. It was a bit outside my house, so it just says, Boris Johnson is a cunt. And then someone put after it, like, and also a prick or something like that. <laughs> it's basically people, like, graffiti tagging, just like, oh, I like this post. Have you seen the one of, um, <laughs> that people have been doing to the Trump Pence? Um, uh, uh, signs outside people's houses. <laughs> no. They're going up with blue marker pen and crossing out certain parts of it. But he comes oh, up God. and says, "I pump penis." Oh, oh he made it, Lucas. Ah. Oh! No, I want to shoot it, Carl. American. So there's, there's loads of like American Trump supporters and just got signs outside the house saying, "I pump penis." <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking too right. Don't worry, I'm already on it. Oh, but speaking of. Like politics and America and Call of Duty. Uh, did you see the shit that went down recently with uh, Call of Duty Cold War? Um, I think you're gonna have to be more specific. Right. This is fucking incredible. So there's a new Call of Duty game in the works. Of and course. As of the time of recording this, there was a ad released to like promote it. I right hear the trailer for Call of Duty. Cold, I think it's Black Ops Cold War. Yes, Black Ops Cold War. So it's blocked cow. <laughs> something like that. Uh, the, the, the fucking acronym is going to be ridiculous. But in this brief like, trailer, um, there is a, or there was a brief, I think, second long shot from Tianman Square. Oh, um, yeah. I heard something about this, but I haven't looked into it. Okay. Well, I'm glad that I get to tell you because the game is set during the Cold War, which is yeah. Tianman Square happened for everybody except if people living in China, where nothing happened. Um, <laughs> uh, in Tianmen Square, and China got wind of this, and um, have sh they've not reached out to Activision, but for some reason, Activision has mysteriously removed that trailer and released an edited version with that section cut out. Ah, okay. But do you know what makes this like just so deliciously ironic, Lucas? Go on. Do you know what the tagline for Call of Duty Cold War is? <laughs> no. Never. Um, don't forget history. Or you're doomed to repeat it. Oh no! So it's like, oh, don't repeat. Like you, you don't. Don't forget, forget history. history as we literally erase history from our trailer. <laughs> oh fuck me! That's China. fucking awful. China. Like Ronald Reagan's also in that game. Yeah. Like, he's in the trailer, and I don't know if these are real or not because I refuse to like check because fuck that game. Hmm. Uh, People keep releasing like edits of press F to ignore the AIDS epidemic. Oh, oh it's just, no. like, it's Ronald Reagan, fun fact, um, uh, exasperated the AIDS epidemic because he realized it was largely targeting um, gay Americans mm. and he didn't give a shit if gay Americans died. So he intentionally ignored that epidemic and downplayed it. Jesus Christ. Uh, he also sold missiles to Iran and the CIA under his watch. Um, uh, yeah, but I'm sure that didn't come back to bite America in the ass, right? But Lucas, there's no, like, I, we don't want politics in our video games. Yeah, no politics. Not, not fucking Ronald Because all I saw was a tweet of someone going like, oh, um, like, don't forget Tiananmen Square or something like that. Um, hashtag Call of Duty. And I was like, what? Mm. I was like, I don't understand what the context is for this, but... Yeah, Isn't that's it fucking awful. So amazing that the tagline is don't forget history, and it's all about how... You can't let them erase history. You, you've got to remember it because the Cold War started because people forgot. Like, like they yeah. didn't remember like, how oh, futile God. war was. And um, they've like 
They're literally erasing history to placate and eat like fucking China to make that China money. Oh god. So Carl, tell me which door am I breaching through? Oh go for the kitchen, man. Go for the ground floor. Ground floor, this one. Yeah, because you get more fights, you get more cool dumb fight scenes. Oh. And like, as much as we rag on Call of Duty, like, yes, the games are fun to play, and it's like, it's really, like, just, uh, they are fun, well made shooters. But stuff but like that, Lee, Putting into context of, like, like, how Call of Duty wants to market itself, it's like, god damn it. Like, it like, Call of Duty literally now. shoots itself in the kneecaps. It makes it worse as well when it's saying stuff like when your tagline is don't forget history and your cow talent. Yeah, that's fucking awful, man. To an oppressive, abusive government that brutalizes its people to make money. So you're literally putting uh, this above pol like uh, the politics of another country above your artistic intent. Oh, shoot me in the back, Lucas. Oh, oh in the ass. Oh, oh man, shoot people in the back. No politics here. <laughs> Oh, that guy made it through. Oh, oh reaching with a striker now, Carl. Come on, Lucas. Make sure no one leaves to the kitchen. Shoot people in the back. Keep in mind as well, like, this Cold War is a sequel to Black Ops. Oh, Lucas, this is the fun room. So, Lucas, look at that wall. The fuck are we going to do? Carl, customise me. All right, so look at that wall. Uh, get the MTAR. All right, you're going to have to help Top me. Left. Top left. Top left. Top left, yeah. Ah, there we go. MTAR. TAR 21. And then the uh, W2000, which is the sniper rifle next to it. This thing? Ah, the wow wow. Because this is the one that's made of wood. Oh, God, the desert eagle. Because nothing says high tech like fucking wood. <laughs> fucking wooden sniper oh, rifle. God. Man, there's, so, the, there's so many toys. Like, this is what I, I mean. Like, they literally go, oh, have fun with guns. And then it's like, oh man, the, the modern brutality is war. <laughs> like, you die and they bring up a poignant quote from yeah. like a politician about how futile war is. Because like, don't forget in Black Ops... Just like, accept Black that it's fucking stupid COD games. Like, Black Ops is the one where you have that um, moment in it where you put the broken glass in a guy's mouth and punch him in the face. Oh god. It's the one where you torture someone. And that's another game where they have that thing of... Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you are offended by this moment, you can skip it. It's like, no, fuck you. You put it in the game. You put it in, yeah. Like, what's worse than putting it in is not fucking committing. Yeah, it's sheepishly taking it out. Well, you can ignore it if you want. It's like, no, you put this in there. Like, let's play you the version You thought of the this game. was a good decision. Yeah, let's play the version of the game that you thought was acceptable for release. Oh, God. Oh. Kill him. Kill him. Oh, and welcome, by the way, to this episode, and welcome to, like, our lightning round of Call of Duty. Ah, oh, man, Call of Duty so fast. Because, yeah. um, we, we, we got really excited playing Pokemon and ran we over. So, so, uh, because we're so far ahead on this, and it hasn't even started mission. coming out yet. Just gonna do the one mission. Uh, we're just doing this mission. We're just doing this mission, so, like, you get, like, condensed... Carl and Lucas ragging on politics in America. That's speedy Call of Duty. The best bit is as well, um, I, we did go on a huge rant about um, politics in the Pokemon one, where it was the politics of um, the competitive scene. <laughs> Fuck you, Pokemon. It's like, damn it! Like, Pokemon politics. Keep Pokemon politics out of my Pokemon game, man. Oh, it's great. But, but, is there any person who present, like shows a weaker soul than the... Right, the shitty reply guys who are like, oh, keep politics out of gaming as they play Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. I just like, want my games to be fun, man. It's like, keep politics out of gaming because there is a gay character in, like, yeah, Last of Us. Yeah, it's very weird that, like, politics about war and taking over the White House and shit like this are fine, but politics about People we included a, a buff female in our game... It's like, keep politics out. The so Lucas, protect the hard drive. I will protect it, Carl. Don't you worry. Just see what happened. Oh, that's a fucking good hard drive, that. We need that for the archive. <laughs> Just go walk as well, overall. Oh, as well. They, oh! There's like a million claim logic you can do as well. Oh, man, oh, look at that? Low, Lucas, look at that at low speed. That's like, do you know what that is? That's like the office. 
That was like before we got the office, back the big wangers HQ. Like five megabits per second trying to upload like Oh god, no, no. Because I looked at it when it was like um, 12 megabits per second. I was like, this game came out in like 2009. You can fuck off. I couldn't get that in my last flat. Like in 2019. Uh, it's fine. It's military hardware, I guess. I guess. But like... The military will get access to the best To be flat. fair, even now in 2020, in... A flat that I moved to that I knew had good internet speeds, like, I've got like 30 something mega upload speed. Do and it's, it's doing that right now. And then, it, yeah. You, why can't you just pick up the hard drive and leg it? Um, it's we, uploading data. We've just established that it's rocket launch proof. <laughs> just attach it to an RPG and fire it into the ocean. <laughs> Where is he? Like, this guy's wailing on this one soldier. He's loving it. Just I'm... do what you do. Just lie down next to it and shoot people through the door in the peanut. But, um, I'm always remiss to remind people that um, if you don't think a piece of media is political, it's because it aligns with your politics. Yeah. It's a statement that is true now and will forever be true. It's like, as well, it's not politics. People just fucking exist. Like, gay <laughs> people and women exist. It's like, How it's not dare you put politics in my game? What do you mean? Including a gay character? Yeah, keep them out. It's like, so what you mean is keep gay characters out of the game? Like gay people exist. Like, the, Carl, apparently not. Oh. And it, it, it frustrates me to no end of like, you're happy to consume Call of Duty talking about like, the horrors of war, quote unquote, and like, doing all this shit of putting in quotes and every, and then as soon as it's like, oh well Dream Daddy's political because it put gay characters like, trying to date each other in a game. Like, no, gay fuck off! Like so we're pissing off enough people with this one, it's great. Yeah, we, really I think we you. might have done this playthrough without, like, subconsciously done this playthrough just to piss everyone off. It was like, no, fuck you. You're wrong, <laughs> why? Because I watched Nicole, the YouTube We won't video. know until, like, this playthrough goes live. Yeah, and I don't and it's so unfair that there's so many, like, uh, videos in this playlist that aren't live. <laughs> God, you do it like you're going jaded like me. <laughs> but, uh, we had That's a okay, like, wider it. discussion about um, just representation in gaming. So got, we're pissing people off with this conversation. If, if we're going to piss people off, we might as well go full on. God. And have this discussion just again on like the record posterity. Of, uh, we were discussing like how bad it is. Like, on stream last think, night, playing Smash Bros. Yeah. Can you think of a single black character that you could argue would have a place in Smash Bros. So an iconic character from a series that has not been that, represented. That originated in video games. That is black. And we were like, we struggled to think of one. And then even but, chat struggled to think of one. Like one one person suggested like, oh, Sergeant Johnson. It's like, well, that's not a protagonist though. And also as well, uh, he's not even, he's not the main character. And he has, yes, he's in a video game that's quite popular, but would he fit in Smash? Uh, no. He wouldn't fit in Smash, and you'd also put Master Chief in first. Exactly. Who, who like, admittedly, we don't know the race of or whatever, but, like, he's that's white. the thing. He's a white guy. Is he voiced by a white guy? Uh, yes, it's John St. John. Okay, there, there we go. I believe it's John St. John who does the voice. I mean, it's but, yeah, he's voiced by a white guy, and he's white in the comics and in the, uh, like, the cutscenes where you get to see, like, um, the back of his head and stuff. Ah, right, okay. He's like the most generic soldier man ever. Just yeah. a shaved head. Oh, Steve Downs, voice of Master Chief. Ah, sorry, I get confused um, between the voice of Master Chief and the voice of Master Unless IGN is lying, because I the um, Xbox podcast um, podcast unlock now opens with, this is Steve Downs, voice of Master Chief, saying, like, watch this podcast. Oh, and okay. it's really fucking annoying. John St. John, then, I think he's the voice of Two uh, Nukem, maybe. Ah, okay, yeah. Or he might be the announcer. Ah, uh, maybe, yeah. The announcer from the multiplayer. Look it up. But when we were thinking, like, we couldn't think of a single black character who would fit in Smash. It's like, but you can name, like, a dozen white characters. Yeah, the fact that chat were, like, coming up with one or two potentially, maybe, like, arguable answers, and then it's like, look at all of the fucking white protagonists in this game. Like, the yeah. white males in Smash. It's like when we went into the character select screen to check if are there more playable Pokemon than females in this <laughs> yeah. game? And the fact that we, I said that and you went, no, we had to check. Like, there, there, was, was, there was a genuine moment where we had to check what has more representation, Pokemon or female? Or women. And it's like, yeah, that highlights an issue in like, you know, just like the medium. fact that we even have to question it. 51% of the Earth's population gets less representation than fucking Pokemon. I'm pleased for all the people like 
not getting really fucking salty about this, like, just, you know, have positive talks about this in the comments and whatnot. Yeah. And everyone who doesn't like this conversation can go fuck themselves. Yeah, because... because it needs to be talked about even in, like, you know, my Call of Duty playthrough that's going to get no views. Like, people yeah. need to fucking talk about this shit. It's the thing of as well, if you're one of those people who's making the suggestions of, well, what about Lee from Walking Dead to name black protagonists from video games? The fact that you're reaching so far for like this one note character the from one a example. game to justify, oh no, it's not a problem. There's this one character from one game 10 years ago when you can look at every game released this year and virtually every main character is a white dude. Like there's more protagonists from Call of Duty that you could have named than like everybody that people were suggesting last night mm -hmm. like you could name more call of duty protagonists if you pay attention to call of duty yeah like captain pride so mavish roach and uh ramirez Red well Hulk. not ramirez uh yeah ramirez will be hispanic i believe i believe so yeah so you but can yeah, name it's more like characters ridiculous. from a single franchise i said it yesterday it's like um a similar argument is uh it's like oh we need more female-led action movies and people will always bring up the same fucking three examples of the bride from kill bill sarah connor from terminator and ellen ripley from aliens it's like yes those are three iconic female characters from and movies. then you but, was it you who brought up like oh yeah arnold schwarzenegger has more iconic characters just as an actor alone yeah so one actor has more notable action stars than the entire genre the entire female gender that's a problem the fact that you can say that and it's not like a lie or made up or hyperbole highlights an issue that needs to be fucking solved yeah but when a single actor has more representation in a genre than an entire gender oh god no and it's like that's what they said like the pokemon thing yeah Pokemon has more rep, like, almost as much representation in Smash Bros as fucking women. And like, we did it as well. We were talking about what Black Panther, mm -hmm. you know, Ripping Peace, Chadwick Boseman. Of, yeah. Is there a single black character in Smash Bros? And then someone like, went, oh, but Villager has an alternate skin where he's is, black. And it's like, really? You're reaching that hard. And then people go, Ganondorf's black. It's like, no, he's got fucking like green skin because he's <laughs> evil. And it's like, if the one character you can think of is the king of evil. What is and that also, saying? And also isn't black. Yeah, and also isn't black. There's only one, and we know, oh no, there's only one green screen character, one green skin character who's black, and that's fucking Piccolo. Yeah. Because like, no white man has got as much fucking swag as Piccolo. Oh no, no. Like, you compare fucking Goku to Piccolo. But well, that's God. what I love about this. It's whenever you make this conversation, people always bring like those those three examples those like those couple that they have in their back pocket yeah like, like have you ever heard the phrase the exception that proves the rule <laughs> yeah. uh, just for those people or the people that maybe know someone who is like that those contrarians who always bring up those sort of examples uh, maybe use that one of the more representation for pokemon than <laughs> yeah or like, like if, if someone's argument is no we've got enough women in gaming it's like just say there's more pokemon or there's an arguable amount of Pokemon to women in Smash Bros. And this is where someone will be, but you can also play as like female Byleth, but Byleth is male by default. Like the default is a male, not a female, so therefore we would count that as a male character. The only ones we counted as female were the ones that were represented, represented on the character select screen as being female. Yeah, and if you use that same uh, argument, there is not a single black character in Smash Bros. Yep. No call, uh, Ganondorf, he's the king of evil and not black. Yeah. Which like, is a great. whole other thing. Yeah, that's, a, that's a whole other fucking conversation to be had. So, I was talking to my girlfriend about it, about how mad she gets at the live action Avatar movies, where a series that is defined by its connection to Asian culture is a celebration. Just run forward. It's one of those things where they'll spawn infinitely to run forward. Okay. Um, where. It is rooted in Asian culture. Like even the art of like bending is rooted in a like Asian martial arts. Yep. With a film, they got a bunch of white people to play all the main characters, and then the only people of colour, they play the bad guys. Yeah, and it's oh for fuck's sake, what are you doing guys? Oh so bad. I can't so remember bad. what it was called, because yeah, let's ignore that fucking film. But it was like um 
that film that Matt Damon was in, I believe. Uh, the Great Wall. The Great Wall, yeah. There we go. Oh, look. It's this moment again, look, where you get blown up. <laughs> we got blown up. Okay. Slow motion. Yes, Carl, yes! yes! Get dragged away. He's going to give you a gun. He's going to hand you a gun, and you got to shoot. Got to do the slow yeah! motion shooting. Yes! Slow motion shooting. Every time. They've got one fucking play. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that one though, they get a pass on that one because it is, um, uh, Matt Damon was, it was made by a Chinese movie company and they hired Matt Damon because Matt Damon's a popular actor in China. Oh, right, okay. Luca. Come on, get up! Though. It's okay, you're gonna be safe because, thank you, helicopters armed with nuke, like, uh, <laughs> giant missiles. Don't worry, Carl, I've got plot armor. It's fine. The best kind of armor. It is. Nah, DK might have plenty of super armor, but so let's have it. Oh no! 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 I had plot armor, but it's gone. I've wasted it. Hard drive. No, my pawn. No, so don't die on us. No politics, though, Lucas. <laughs> Corrupt military officials um, doing like black ops and hiding um, information. And just and, and just generally like the fucking no Russian mission. Do you know what I love about this as well? How much um, uh, like they so like oh look it's ghosts no not ghosts not that character who literally has no face on. Yeah, me. literally faceless side character. If Joey comes back. Is he Modern Warfare? Oh, I thought you were gonna say he's in Call of Duty Ghosts. <laughs> No, he's um, he's in um, Modern Warfare, and he comes back, and they don't explain why. Really? Yeah, they don't explain it. He's like, I can right now see him burning alive. <laughs> well, well, burning fair, dead, though, I guess. The new Modern Warfare is a new trilogy, just called Modern Warfare, but it happens to have the same characters in it. Right, like Captain Price is always in the games. Yeah, but that kind of thing. Happen. But Carl, he's so edgy, he's got a skull on him. Yeah. Like, we need to bring him back. We need a meal back in Halo. Like, how many people had that as their Xbox Live avatar? Oh, God. It's so fucking many. everyone. It was a meal or it was Ghost. I'm not going to lie. Probably me at some point. A meal was good just because of his last stand where you go and find his corpse. Yes. He's surrounded by eight high level yeah. elite. A meal was cool because he was cool in the game. Yeah, but he was also had a really shit design. Like, I hated that era of Halo. Where it was, let's try and make different looking um, uh, uh, Spartan. Yeah. So your main character's dead. Yeah. Do you rem Lucas, do you even remember his name? Oh, wait, I thought we were playing a soap then. But soap's alive. So we were just talking, to Price McTavish were talking. Right, that's how disposable these characters are. Um, it must have been that we were playing as unnamed protagonist instead of soap. Alongside Ghost. Oh, sorry, alongside Ghost, yeah. Because oh, normally that. when we're playing with Ghost, we're playing as Soap McTavish. The thing is though, speaking of like a meal moment, like I did feel bad when Emil died because you spend a lot of time with him. Call of Duty jumps across the world so much and you were in the boost of different characters. Yeah. So do you want to do this mission? This mission is actually super fun. Uh, we can do, yeah. This mission, that's, I like the bow. And yeah. I do remember what happened last time, because last time it was, um, we're going to split it up into two groups, so unnamed protagonist got split up into ghost group. So this is the one where you got a whole ass. Just oh, oh, God, through I the got his knees. Yeah. Do we sorry. kill him, Carl, or we just leave him crawling? Yeah, go on, violate the Geneva Convention, why not? Shoot, oh no, it's alright, your teammates are doing it for you. Nah, I got him, don't worry. Shoot oh. an unarmed enemy crawling for help. Well, he was definitely armed still. <laughs> But Lucas, it's uh, no fault. Yeah, like he was crawling for safety. And, um, like, he wasn't unarmed, but he was begging for mercy. Uh, that might be my favourite moment of the playthrough, where we're just reading out the Geneva Convention <laughs> and how many times we have violated it in this game as the heroes. I don't know what my favourite part of the playthrough is, and I don't know what's going to piss off people the most, but this has literally just become. The annoy everyone watching series. No, it is annoy that guy. Yeah. And when I say that guy, and if you don't know who I mean, that, and you're you are, you I'm might saying, be that guy. Um, and I'm I'm glad that we can have these conversations, Carl. I'm I'm really glad that we have these moments to have the the conversations that apparently not many people have. 
or they're not un they're either unwilling to have them or get angry at the idea of having to have them. Yeah. It's Don't get like, me wrong, I get annoyed that we have to have these conversations. Well, can you imagine though, Lucas, of when, uh, say for example, I brought up that Smash Bros thing? Yes. Uh, oh, you brought it up, and then if I got really aggressive and aggressively defensive, and started arguing, well, no, the villager has an alternate colour skin, that's black. Yeah. And I and genuinely thought that that was enough representation for an entire race in what is supposed to be a celebration of gaming as a whole. Yeah. It's supposed to be an inclusive medium that everyone can enjoy. And that is, that's the thing, is like that conversation came off, as we've mentioned, like unfortunate passing of Chadwick Boseman and like how cool it was for people to have a, a like really, really cool representative of like um, black culture in a Marvel film. Yeah, and I rewatched uh, Black Panther. Yeah, also, me too, yeah. yeah. Now we're working with Makarov, so we're working with terrorists. Oh, great. Yeah, Makarov's now on our side because enemy of my enemy is my friend. But uh, yeah, uh, the passing of Henry Bogan, watching Black Panther and watching it with the director's commentary. And just oh, I haven't done that. Were, uh, talk about how just so much of the movie is just, they wanted to celebrate every aspect of um, like black culture. Mm -hmm. Right down and uh, epitomized uh, with that council scene. Where oh, every okay. person there is wearing um, uh, an outfit that is homaging a different African tribe. Oh, that's cool. And they have like the part on the waterfall where they have all the different like African tribal outfits. Yeah, yeah. Celebrating yeah. Um, just like, you know, black culture and history. And yeah. I know someone right now, that guy is what about Blade? Yes, Blade was a black super. And yes, Steel, played by Shaquille O'Neal. But, uh, black but they didn't celebrate any parts of the culture. That was no, like yeah. a film about a black guy running around killing vampires. Like, plus as well, they were very different. They, they were very specific. They were specific aimed towards a certain audience of being like, you know, bloody action movies. Which you know, yeah, have, uh, they do have their audience. And then like Steel just died on his ass. Mm -hmm. But Black Panther was a big budget. Um, Marvel movie aimed at a, the widest possible audience. And I love, like, uh, people are retweeting all the videos now of, like, um, just people celebrating Black Panther coming out in cinemas and stuff. People went so high. And, like, like yeah. it's so cool watching those videos and, like, seeing how excited the kids are to go watch Black Panther and stuff. And it's like, we need more of that shit. And all those uh, videos of, like, uh, kids in inner city schools. Yeah. Uh, in predominantly black areas where celebrities just said, oh yeah, we're going to pay for everyone in this school to go watch Black Panther. Yeah, man. Yeah. And just seeing all like the young black kids like, oh, there's a superhero who looks like me. And if you're one of those people out there who thinks that's not a big deal, shut the fuck up. It totally is. Well, the reason that people will think that's not a big deal is because they're probably white males that have been represented properly. Like, and abundantly for years and years. And think about how irate those guys get. Like, as we mentioned, like, when there is a woman in a video game. Yeah. The moment they are not catered to exclusively, suddenly it's it's awful and it's terrible. Now imagine that for your entire life. And yep. For century, and, like, for literally as long as the medium has existed. Like, Battlefield tried to put a woman in one trailer and people kicked the fuck off. Uh, breaking down how offensive it is to, like, you know, history that you... you um, gamifying war, shut up. Yeah, shut the fuck up, like, please, right now. And we yeah, brought that example before, but we can keep bringing it up over and over again because how fucking stupid that argument is. is yeah, it's uh, disrespectful to uh, history. You gamifying World War. As, as Call of Duty removes, like, fucking Tiananmen Square from its trailers because China wants it to. To stop that China dick. Because don't forget history, guys. Don't forget, don't forget history. Don't history. You do to repeat it if you forget it. It's like it's perfectly iron. With the Black Panther thing, uh, like it, it is like when um, Christopher Reeve like, unfortunately got paralyzed. A generation of children, their hero, like Superman, is crippled. Yeah. He's like, he's, he can't walk. And then like, oh, Black Panther, the first black super they could look up to, like, a super who looks like them, who they can relate to, is dead. Yeah. That's awful. It's That's fucking awful. And like I can never um, put into words like how bad it is, and I I hope we're trying to to make the right point here. So I don't really like to talk about it because I don't feel like I have enough gravitas to talk about it properly. 
Yeah, and it's really, it's not something that it impacts me all that much. I'm a grown ass man. Exactly. Like, we and are what? talking about this from the perspective of like a two child. white males, like trying to do oh. our best to bring up the conversation. Yeah, but we try to like emphasize from the perspective of like, you know, a young child. Yeah, we are, we are kids, doing our best. Those kids who were excited to see like Black Panther on the big screen. And then but, just hearing about all the behind the scenes stuff, about how much of a fucking baller he was. Yeah, exactly. Like, everybody. Even before like he passed away, everybody only ever had good things to say about that man. And then like uh, the thing that came out recently is where oh yeah, Chadwick Boseman wrote the best line in Black Panther. See that? Uh, no, I didn't see that. Uh, the Killmonger line of uh, "I can save you." It says no. He's then you'll just arrest me, uh, throw me into the ocean, like the rest of our brothers oh, um, fuck. who prefer death to bondage. In reference to the slaves that would just jump off the ship because they preferred to die. And there'd be someone slave. Oh man! And it's like uh, Chadwick Boseman suggested that line. Yeah, I, like, I didn't hear about this. And it is like the most fucking brutal line. It's like, oh, that's so harsh. It's so good. Oh god. And again, it's such like a brutal line, but it's such a, an important line. Yeah, and it's an important one as well. Yeah. And that film is like. Uh, the people that keep politics out of that country, that's like so fucking political. Like, so my girlfriend, she's from America, so she was explaining to me. Mm. Like, yeah, the specific uh, frame of putting this in Oakland is so important. And the fact that you see like they're in this like really low income area. And that's where they decide to make like, you know, the Wakanda outreach program. Yes. Yeah. In, a, in a very low um, income, predominantly black neighborhood. Yeah, I didn't know for sure, like, how accurate that was, but I assumed that they picked an area that what that was the case in. It's a very deliberate choice, mate. Yeah, I, I, I assumed as much, even though I don't know for sure. Well, that confirms me by my missus. And it's like, yeah, it's the amount of effort put into that movie is incredible, and it cannot be understated the importance of that film. We made a billion fucking dollars. Yeah. <laughs> We've talked before multiple times like, across the channels that we're on about just the fact that movie studios and just media companies in general are so resistant to the idea of putting women or people of colour in their movies and media. And every time they do, and it's just a good movie or good piece of media, it makes so much fucking money. Yeah. And they're, they're, the takeaway always is not that, oh, movie starring black people can be a success. It is. No, just this one specific movie did well, really Well, it's like you, um, you told me reason. with Will Smith. Yes. Like, making Will Smith a movie star, they had the takeaway of we should make Will Smith a movie star more often, not that we should make black people movie stars more often. Yeah. And I um, was like, what? The story behind that is uh, uh, Will Smith, when he first started getting into acting, like Independence Day, that sort of thing, uh, the Hollywood executives were highly resistant to letting him go to, uh, like, launch parties and stuff in France, mm. things like that. Under the assumption that a black actor or like black led movies would not do well over there. And as a result of that, um, underfunded those movies because they were acting under that assumption. Mm -hmm. And then when those movies happened to do well, because they were good movies, their takeaway wasn't that, oh, black led movies can do quite well. It's that movies starring Will Smith do well. Yeah. Like, oh, you, you almost got the point. You got so close and then you just failed so fucking hard. You just fell at the finish line. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, it's like you you learn the wrong lesson from the right point. Do it, Lucas. Back in the hit. Oh ah. god. And I'm sorry that we have to have these conversations over me just murdering people with fucking random weapons. Ah, oh, it's fine. It's called you do good shit. There's no politics in the game, Lucas. Well, I'm not. I'm not sorry that we uh, can't talk about Call of Duty. I'm sorry that we have to. Or that we've decided to make these conversations happen over me just murdering people, but I'm glad that we're talking about it in some space. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I get too distracted by Pokemon being Pokemon. Yeah. That's one as well. I don't. Oh, do it, Lucas. You got to control the car. I, I, yeah. I'm not controlling anything, Carl. It just cutscened it for me. Oh, uh, okay. Because that thing is off. Well, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I, uh, one of my favourite things that happens with the main channel is when we mention stuff like this is uh, I will always get that smarmy re like, reply guy on Twitter in an email or a DM or something like that 
talking about how you'll lose fans if you do this. And I go look at the uh, analytics and say, oh, so you got 200,000 views and the like to dislike ratio is like 0.1% more dislikes than normal. It's like, oh man. Yeah. And the way I heard it put, and I think this is a really apt metaphor is, they are bugs on the windshield thinking that they can steer the car. <laughs> to know you're close to the end is a kind of it's like they are so shittily so shitty and so inconsequential but they think they're important yeah outnumbered. because they are so unable to understand the idea of even just consider that maybe not everyone agrees with what you're saying mm -hmm. they will remember us oh god man because out of all um, now you're a terrorist we are. We are like the most wanted list, apparently. You become terrorists. This has literally become one piece, and we have bounties on our head. Like that. All that knife. Kill him. Because Carl, you obviously haven't watched One Piece, but I am rewatching it. And did like you might not know, but the way they basically do power levels in that world is who has the highest bounty on their head. That's a good idea. That's a good. And it's such a better idea than the fucking stupid. Um, power levels in Dragon Ball where it just gets like ridiculous. How, okay. The higher you bounce, the more dangerous you are. Yeah, exactly. But, God, yeah, like the amount of people I get when we mention something like this, the conversation we just had in a video, I just mentioned just like, oh, I really wish you wouldn't put this policy in your video. You're going like, to alienate your fans. And I think you are the only person saying this. And then it's so outweighed by the messages I've seen you get of like, Thank you for talking about this. Uh, it's so nice to see a YouTuber who's just not shitty. Who's Who just very... like, it's not even that. It's just that a lot of people are scared to talk about it because they're afraid their analytics will get hurt. And that guy that comments, your channel's going to die, is actually right. And I've, I've said it multiple times of, if your um, success... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what a man, he took it in the back of the head. If your success is based on placating um, racists or bigots, you don't deserve that success. And I completely agree, and on that note, thank you for watching. <laughs> oh, this playthrough is so strong. <laughs> this is the best playthrough we've done, and we don't talk about the game at all. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Lucas and Carl Annoy Bigots and Sexists and Racists. That's the best bit, because I don't give a fuck the people who are getting pissed off by it are the kind of people who would say my girlfriend doesn't have the right to exist because she's not white, so they can oh, go God. themselves. <laughs> That's the way she put it to me. Oh, she said, God. like, there's no point arguing with these people, and she's had... Like white guys. He said, why don't you just talk to them? He says, because they don't think that I should exist. Why should I humor the opinion of a person who does not think I have the right to even stand here and be alive? Fuck them. It's like, yes! That's a really fucking good point. It is. Why should you talk to people and give them the benefit of that when they don't think you should exist? Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> so good.